Uh, I often hear people talk about AI reconstruction, like DLSS would be a game changer for lower end portable hardware like the upcoming Switch 2, I assume. Since this might be true for DLSS 2, isn't DLSS 3 highly depending on how many real frames the device can squeeze out? The lower the frame rate, the bigger the frame time gap an AI uh, frame needs to cover, right? Is DLSS 3 useless uh, for low power target devices? Alex, this this has been sort of coming up quite a lot in terms of Switch to sure. discussion, right? Because um, obviously, you know, people want to sort of treat the NVIDIA feature set like a sort of grab bag of stuff that could be inc uh, in incorporated into a new Switch. Yeah. Uh, DLSS 2, I'd say, is potentially viable, but there are limitations, which you highlighted in a prior video. DLSS 3, though, I think uh, Sasiki I... is highlighting potential issues here even if the required hardware was added. So, yeah, the fact that uh, Switch hardware would target something like 30 FPS-ish, and then DLSS 3 would bring that up to around 60. Um, and the fact that DLSS 3 is less effective the lower the frame rate is. And I put a, a cap of around for normal fast-moving game content of an internal FPS of around 40, aka 80-ish. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll depend on the game, right? Like, it'll depend. Flight, That's the thing. Like flight flight I said in the video, Flight yeah. Simulator at 30 is perfectly fine, though. Internal 30. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Output 60. Um, but another thing that throws a wrench in this, and I think that's less important, Sirsiki? Sirsiki? Sorry. Yeah, why not? Um, is that DLSS 3 to, re to reduce its latency is coupled with Reflex. And Reflex is automatically capping the GPU load and... Uh, the internal rendering to a number of frames below refresh rate constantly and below full GPU utilization constantly. And it requires VRR to be perfectly fine. So if you are targeting like a 60 FPS ish experience on it, it wouldn't be 60 hertz on a 60 hertz display. It wouldn't first of all be 60 FPS with DLSS three. It'd be like 57 FPS actually. Um, and it would still obviously look much the exact same as 60, but the entire purpose was to reduce input latency, this capping below the V-Sync limit. And that would require, so it would, it would for this to be on Switch, it would not only require uh, the hardware and software solution of DLSS 3 being in there, which is a big question mark anyways, because this is uh, from Ada Lovelace, and this is apparently supposed to be an Ampere device. Uh, then it would also require a screen which can do sub 60 VRR potentially. Yeah, which isn't going to happen. Really. Which is realistic. We're already going into extreme dreamland scenario at that point. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, as much as it's cool, it's starting to sound less realistic every day. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the uh, Ampere GPU architecture is in Switch 2 at this point. And from what I understand, it has the Ampere optical flow analyzer. Which, there we go. Uh, yeah, which it's not enough. really, no. I suspect you could probably do it, but it wouldn't be great. Secondly, uh, a lot of people, whenever we talk about DLSS in a handheld, they seem to neglect the concepts that there is still a processing time with DLSS, um, whether it's two or three, right? Yes. So, um, yeah, that is problematic on a low power, low frequency device. And um, yeah, I, DLSS 2, I'd say there's a likelihood it will be in Switch 2. DLSS 3, I, I don't think so. But, you know, on a home console, um, which would be targeting 120 hertz, I think it would actually be pretty good. Uh, any thoughts on this one, John? No, not really. We've gone long yeah. enough. You don't <laughs> have my thoughts. 